Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair Silent Gods. For today's video, I want to do a little showcase of my ancient battlefield team that's clearing stage 9 for season 3. Dive deep battle peak into season 3 of Dragonair Silent Gods. We have a ton of new heroes, new damage types, and new elemental synergy. There's even some new bosses to fight, and we're looking forward to a new challenge. Be sure to download via Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, or Epic Games if you haven't already, and use the promo codes on the screen. Join us. All right, again, this is a showcase of my team, so I'm not saying this is a budget-friendly, free-to-play friendly, whatever team, but I will give tips and tricks and talk about the boss and how to combat it and suggest substitutions along the way. Please don't yell at me for using legendary heroes and legendary artifacts. This is season three. You should have some too. But the, again, this is not going to be just about the heroes. We're going to talk about how to beat the boss in season three. It's changed every season. Ancient Battlefield has changed. But some of these tips are going to kind of be relevant no matter which season you are playing. Uh, and some of them, you're going to notice that those skills change a little bit. So Ancient Battlefield is hard. This is a really hard boss to be. Um, definitely one of the hardest, of course. It's one of the, the final runes that we unlock when we build our characters. So let's take a look here at the boss in general. So if we go to the first one, we can see the suggestions. So as you can see, they suggest buff, blocking, accuracy, penalty, and dispelling of shield. So this is unlike the Grave of Curse this season where you can't deal with buff blocking, buff prohibition, but this one you can use it. So you can prevent the buffs from going on the boss with that skill there, and then he will actually dispel debuffs after the fact. But it's okay, you actually can go ahead and um, prevent those buffs before the other debuffs are dispelled. But the buff the boss does dispel a lot of debuffs, which is unfortunate. So it can be hard. You got to keep putting up that buff prohibition or removing buffs after the fact. And also keep an eye on things like attack penalty, making sure you keep that up multiple times because he's going to keep removing it. Dispelling of a shield is not that big of a deal, honestly, for this one either. But uh, yeah, you're going to see who I use and we'll talk about why. So, first of all, the passive. He can switch between shield and sword form. Shield form, basic attacks deal, blah, 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 and damage converts 80% of the damage dealt to a shield. So, you can get away, just like Grave of Curse, uh, with the boss not putting up too big of a shield himself if you don't let him do much damage. So, here you're going to want to... Um, I guess use I'll use someone like a Garius that puts up big shields that prevents the boss from doing a lot of damage in the first place. Use attack penalty as a debuff to make sure he's not doing too much damage in the first place. This is a really hard boss to fight without solid attack penalty. You want that up the whole time for sure. I definitely have to say that. All right, sword form. He's just doing basic attacks. Let's go to the next part here. Ultimate down inflicted on him will be reduced by 50%. Additionally, every 35% HP lost, he gains a damage reduction. So he gets harder and harder to kill the later you get into the battle. And that cannot be dispelled. You cannot control him as well. So there's lots of new elements here to consider. Um, ultimate down does still help, uh, but again, it's less effective but it's not too bad i mean it's 18 second timer not as bad as some of the others um overall all right let's go to here so we have shield again he stuns the furthest enemy that's the furthest away so you have to position your people properly to have one person the furthest away that has resistance to not get stunned. Enough resistance. I mean, honestly, just kind of going off close to um, recommended resistance 200, you know, kind of a little bit higher to be safe. I usually go with resistance. 
but you'll still get stunned. It's never 100% uh, resist. But that enemy could also be someone quirky like Vinyara. There's a reason she's a queen there. Uh, you'll notice her in a lot of teams. But yeah, I usually just pick someone to have enough resistance on them. Simple enough. All right, and so this damage ignores 30% defense and their shield. So keep that in mind as well. This one hit for hitting someone in the back, it does ignore shields. Uh, then we have the shield form here. He put, this is where he puts up the buffs. So this is the problem. He will remove buffs from you and add stacks to his total damage. So when you're fighting this boss, you do not want to bring in heroes that have buffs. Um, like that can be dispelled. So if you have undispellable stuff, that's different. I think I don't think they count. But buffs are bad. General buffs are bad against this boss. So a lot of the healers can be really hard to use against it because they all bring buffs or protection. But someone like Hexandra was always an MVP because she doesn't bring any buffs. So keep that in mind for season one, two, or three. And then he's going to put up buffs. So then really you just need to time this to have someone removing the buffs anytime afterward. And then he's going to alternate back to this other sword form. And then here he kind of alternates between the skills. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the lineup recommendations. You can really see what people are using. So Voresh is still heavily used. I'm going to be using someone that's a little more ideal that's not even mentioned here, ironically. Um, Victor is a little bit better, actually, because of his kit and how he can be timed for removing buffs. But people are still using Voresh. You can still get away with it. Uh, we have Again, Hexandra. Look at her. Hexandra hanging out here. Ancient Battlefield 9, Sigrid, Furboth, really cool. Um, one single target hard-hitting damage dealer is great here as well. Uh, Cinderella is who I use in the same thing, actually, to have high resist, to be able to heal everybody else, but he can take the stun hit and not get stunned. Um, shields are going to be your friends, so lots of Elminster is going to be great as well. And really just comes down to, uh, some decent damage and dealing with the boss's quirky kit, right? There is no non-legendary lineups here to show except for stage 8. And I'll show stage 7 so you could kind of see what people are working with on my server or what's showing on my server at least. All right, so here we go. Let's go into it, and I'm going to show my team. Really cool visuals. Always love it. So this is my team here. Uh, make sure I'm on Battlefield 9. Yep. Load in the gear. So I picked Erich because I already had him built for the sake of... Uh, oh, I have, I have a new... Aha, let's go fix it. For the sake of Vortex, I already had him built, so that was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I finally have an attack chest I can give. It changed a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, but yeah, this is kind of my team. So Cinderella is in the back. He's the furthest away. He has enough resistance. So you can see he has um over 200 resistance because of our Dreth. Our Dreth is amazing to have in the team because... Her passive gives allies the stacks of blessing, which actually gives, um, after she gets the 100 or 10 stacks, which is 100 resistance, uh, she gives that to everybody. So that's really, really helpful. And then you don't really have to go crazy with the full amount of resistance on Snarell. That actually is great. But this is, yeah, 110 resistance here. So 110 here. That was what I got on him already. He has a resistance chest and he has old gear on right now. Really old gear, nothing special. You can see I'm using epic gear. Uh, I haven't even updated my gear yet. Elminster is in epic gear, haven't updated my gear yet. Erich is in my better gear because I added him to the team later. Uh, our Dreth is same thing, I added her to the team. I added her with some Vortex, slightly better gear, although the horn is not really needed for her. Uh, it's just a buff that can help damage, but it's the, the horn gives a buff that doesn't affect the ancient battlefield stuff. And Victor is kind of a huge key here. So he actually dispels all other buffs and removes the shield as well. 
and then can place buff prohibition on his battle skill. Oh, and then he can do the same thing here as well, and then switch those to a different debuff. So really, really good skill to have. He can so he removes he removes buffs on two different skills, which most people don't. Most of them just remove on one and then add a debuff on the other, like buff prohibition, like Ferrara or Vorash. But he actually does on two skills, so he's really good for this boss. But all right, I'm gonna let this play out. I will use my defense aura for survivability, and yeah, let me let this roll. it with less than optimal gear um but some pretty solid artifacts but yeah there's no timing set for this and that's mostly because victor is so good with his battle skill and his ultimate removing the buffs but you might need to time the buff removal depending on who you're using for that role but other than that i mean making sure attack penalty is up as much as possible having two people that can alternate it would be great Cinderella can pretty much keep it up himself. He's a beast. Um, but if you're using someone else, like maybe Elminster and Rose or whatever, you can time them to try to keep it up for most of the fight, or at least before the boss does some of their harder hits. Um, but keep in mind, he's going to dispel debuffs here at these skills. So if you time your attack penalty to go right before those, he's just going to remove them anyway. So keep... This is a very hard boss to fight to have all the bases covered. But if you have a strong supportive lineup like I have, and you just bring in someone like I have Erich for damage, it's honestly enough. Uh, it's just error on the side of more support and you'll be better off. But all right, guys, hope this video was helpful. The discussion in the beginning was the most important part. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. And if you haven't already, be sure to download Dragon or Silent Gods now using the link in the description or the pinned comment. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, and Epic Games.